like I said, I've seen you before. I watched your channel when you had about 2,000 subscribers, and I watched you. You know, you've more than doubled since then, and it's been a very short I time. I can't even believe it. I can't even believe it. It's awesome. Whether I agree with what you're seeing is what you think you're seeing, or whether it is or not, man. It just it's fun to watch you. You can mm -hmm. be looking at freaking uh, seagulls and the way you talk about it, you just you make it. I'd be like, dude, look at that fucking seagull. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. It's I right. make it convincing, and I've really thought about it, and I I haven't like rejected anyone's material, and I've shown everything, and just kind of given my authentic reaction cool. <clears throat> as to what I'm seeing. Okay, that's you, man. I and love it. I'm telling you, something's not right. <laughs> it's that's weird. all there is to sure. it. I mean, whether we disagree on the fundamentals of how a damn lens flare is created, and if that's what we're actually seeing. And if we're seeing bugs on the lens, right. with a good percentage of these pictures, I really feel strongly that there's got to be at least 10 to 20% of some serious anomalies uh -huh. that we better be paying attention to. And, um, yeah, and just from the research that you've done on your channel, I am pretty sure you're aware of something's up. So uh, I took you wrong at first completely. And I'm like, wait a second, this guy's actually on board here. He's just trying to get everything to the table and let's really figure it out instead of like, let's maybe figure it out. Let's actually really figure it out. Exactly. And I had to laugh that you had made a comment about what was it? The marshmallow men and the mantis ray guys or whatever. Oh, what was you, it? That's a true story. Today? Yeah, no, I, I believe it. I bet you've had all kinds of crazy people say some real interesting things to you, but I think you've learned a lot. And I think you're seeing some patterns that some of us are seeing too, just in general. And so I'm trying to pay attention to some of that, right? So yeah. anyway, yeah, if it's a seagull, maybe I'll, it might, you know, to me at the first when I see some stuff, yeah, I, I have no idea. And then sure. later I'll pull it down because it was like obviously a squished bug on the lens or whatever. Some stuff I've left up just to see what will happen. Yeah. Um, anyway, I don't Which know. Which is I good. I think that. that's yeah. good. Absolutely. Keep keep it up, man. Don't take it down. You know, I mean, unless you want to. I, I think it's great to kind of see you grow as well. And, and what you're doing is fun to watch. And you might want to leave the comments open, man, because people, you know, people love to leave comments about that kind of stuff. And if you don't like yeah. what they have to say, you can always erase it. But I sure, I mean, ever since I saw the first video you did, I was impressed. So I, I hope that you keep oh, that passion. You. And no, oh, yeah, absolutely, man. And, and I noticed on your on your channel too, let's just kind of roll with this, brother. And I'll, sure. and I'll add an intro Please. after. Uh, <clears throat> you know, on, uh, on your channel, when mm -hmm. you first started doing videos, it wasn't on Nibiru. It looks like you started doing stuff on underground bunkers and Walmart yep. stuff. And yeah, so uh, tell us about yourself, man. And I think it's awesome that you're LDS. I mean, I've got a lot of friends you. and family members that are Mormon and they give you the shirt off their back. They're just amazing people. So, yeah, tell us about yourself, That's Chris. Cool. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I was born and raised Mormon. Um, I was born and raised here in Sunnyvale, California. I was actually out of Milpitas. I was actually born on a Vandenberg Air Force Base. Then I went to Milpitas, and then uh, Sunnyvale is where I actually originated from. And um, I was in Utah for about 12 years, came back in 2006. Um, I, <clears throat> I had my channel... <clears throat> excuse me, Chris the Bomb was my Gmail moniker, and I had had it since like 2002. But a couple little videos here and there. I I really wanted to tell people what I had been studying my whole life, which is very similar to the content you're putting on your channel. Okay, so that's that's Chris Potter. Everything you guys discuss about on your channel is absolutely everything I live for, and have been talking people's heads off for years. And I seriously wish I could get you some footage from nine, from like the nineties, me talking the New World Order. Anyway, so yeah, so I'm kind of crazy buff, and I started putting some stuff out. Um, yeah, Walmart, uh, Nibiru, uh, the snow, dude, it was wig. That's what it was. So I met Dane Wigging. Oh, the plastic snow. Yeah, dude, something was up with the snow. I go, I, I separated from my wife. And, and part of the reasons we like separated was my channel and what I started talking about. Cause it, for some reason, something inside of me, you know, a lot of people say how they're, they're awakening. I think it was like a second awakening for me. Cause one of the examples I give is that like when I was five or seven years old, somewhere around there, I was checking out books 
about aliens in the Sunnyvale Public Library. Period, the end, end of story. I was interested in Bigfoot, etc. When I was really little and people called me weird my whole life and I'm friggin' determined to prove to the world that we are being lied to and that the gravity of the lies are so significant that it's ridiculous. So uh, I figured I would start with, you know, a couple little things. So it was weird because the snow. So I call my mom. She's in Utah. And I go, Mom, burn the snow and tell me what happens. She said it smelled like plastic and it turned black. What part of Utah, if I can ask? Yeah, no, you're fine. Sandy, Utah. So she goes, son, what, what's going on? You know, and I'm like, I think I've stumbled onto, that's when I started to get into chem, a chem trailing and geoengineering. And I had met um, Dane Wigington uh, through Facebook. And at the time when I was on Facebook through a friend, Trace Evans. And at the time, Dane was accepting anybody he could to listen to him regarding his plight towards, you know, helping the world understand that we're being sprayed. He's Period a great guy. Day. He's friggin' awesome. So I just, I said, I'm a tech guy. Here's my resume. Whatever I can do to help you, you let me know. So he came to me with a couple little things. I keep in touch with him. We don't really tell anybody. Now, it's not like I'm like his super secret helper or anything like that, but I'll take a bullet for the guy because I know absolutely he is doing, he has like, he is supposed to be where he's supposed to be right now and he's supposed to have his voice and that's like his area. I feel like there's a lot of people that are supposed to kind of be speaking up right now and each one of us kind of have our own talent and our own little area or arena what's, that we do well in. And I think Wayne, uh, Wayne, <laughs> Dane does an extremely good job in his story about how, you know, he worked for Bechtel. He was doing some uptake uh, tests and there was like way too much heavy metals in the water. And then he just went, you know, went to town on this whole uh, theatrical. So I'm, I'm kind of tripping out. I'm like, okay, okay, what's going on? You know, and I'm LDS Mormon. So I'm always waiting, looking at the signs of the times. It's just something that's, I've always been involved in the weird of life because I've always been concerned about when it would be time that we would be considering the second coming being like right around the corner. So I was ready and uh, I knew something was wrong significantly. And then that just kind of led me into Nibiru and Planet X. And I'm like, so I, I and I, I know you've had Bob Fletcher. So I, I read everything I could on Bob Fletcher and on John Moore, and I wigged out. I was like, oh, dude. And then it's every for me, it was like everything that I'd read in the scriptures and the Bible, Revelations, Dead Sea Scrolls, the Lost uh, bi- books of the Bible, Book of Mormon, blah blah blah. It looks like it's a planet that's gonna come in or a whole solar system, and that was for me. It was overwhelming. I'm like, okay, dude, this is really happening. And then I had a sighting. And I saw this, I swear to God, I saw a red planet right by my employer at Oracle World Headquarters. And I didn't know what to do, dude. I was on the bridge. I went and drove around, turned back around, came back up, trying trying to see it, trying to get a picture. And automagically, and I tell this to everybody, it just happened to just be disappearing behind the clouds. And I I could have taken a snapshot. It would have still been like a pinkish little hue, but it wasn't like a red friggin' planet. It was at 3 p.m. The friggin' sun was not up. Because I was looking, dude. I was like, okay, yeah, there's rays right here at the, you know, at the horizon. So, Mr. Sunny, what is that? And there's the moon. What is and I freaked out and I knew, I knew, I knew that it was the sign that I had been waiting for and that maybe millions and billions of other people possibly were too. There had to be something significant if there was really a Jesus and if he was really coming back home, there had to be something to tell us, dude, that, yeah, I'm coming, boo. And I really felt strongly that everything just kind of came together all at once. And I felt strongly that I just needed to tell everybody that there's a planetary system coming. I friggin' saw it. 
And then all of a sudden I started getting pictures from people and then they just, and the trolls and nonstop weirdness and goodness has just come to me and I've tried to just crank it back out. And some of the footage that I have, like I put that video out in, t in anticipation of talking to you as well as Steve Olson and John Moore, uh, I haven't wanted to interview. I wanted to put, you know, my best material that I could find that was the most convincing in my latest video. I took the one video about being mean sick off. But, like, I don't, if it's not another sun or a star, I'd sure like to know what it is and how it got there. Because nobody, seriously, I, I mean, I don't really, I don't really feel confident that, like, there's any, like, scientific body of any type and we really need and maybe that's why people like me need to start speaking up so i can kind of band together and create what we're missing to find out what we're looking at so maybe we can calm a few people down or we can really like you know i seriously i feel strongly that it's going to come to a point where people like me and you are going to confront the authority and we're going to straight up go, you were lying to us. And here you are. And this is what the evidence is. You can take me away. I don't care. Boom. Th what is this? Stop lying to us. We need to know what this is. Anyway, I'm kind of going off. But that's kind of where the direction of my channel has come from. And a lot of my passion has been, I think, because of some of my separation and because of my religious beliefs, too, and because of my sighting. Now, how is th how is things now? How are your current uh, opportunities at home and stuff and with your family? Are you starting to get things worked out? Are they taking it easy on you now and realizing that oh. you just want to help people? Yeah, you know, um, yeah, the, the soon-to-be ex is actually pretty cool as long as I don't um, openly discuss two planet issues with the youngster, um, which is kind of hard because he he's seen me already do that, but... As I've matured through my channel, and she's seen that I'm a harmless guy and just want the best for my kids, um, she's actually enjoyed some of my channel, and I know that they're watching it. So that's been kind of cool. And then just like my mom has been really encouraging, um, some of my family members I've just learned not to talk to about it. And then we're good. We're fine. <laughs> right. We just completely ignore the elephant in the room, and everything's fine. You know what's interesting is oftentimes your family is the most difficult to kind of wake up sometimes. And it's it's unfortunate, yet they usually come around, and especially when your intentions are genuine. And one of the things that I certainly appreciate about folks like yourself, Chris, is you definitely can see that you've been lied to. And you understand that by the media, by the powers that be that control the media. And you want to know the truth, and that's what you're doing. So when you get this footage and you're presenting it, you're doing it raw. You're not editing out bits and pieces. You're showing it what's on your sleeve and your emotions, and you're letting the whole world know. And, and I certainly applaud you for that. It takes a, a big person to do that. Now, when I see stuff like this, and I look at some of these anomalies in the sky, I used to be a lot more geared towards the conspiracy aspect, right? Like, oh, yeah, man, that, that probably is Planet X. Or that probably is uh -huh. Wormwood or... Or there probably is going to be a pole shift, or maybe there is going to be a bank holiday, or maybe the new world order is going to come round people up. Maybe I am on the red list. Maybe I can't get on an airplane. I don't want to go through the naked body scanners and have them sniff my butt and take my shoes off. You know, I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to uh, have to worry about if I want to work somewhere or go into a certain facility, have to get 45 injections full of thimerosal, squalene, and different adjuvants and aluminum uh -huh. and other nasties. You know, so absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, but when I see this Planet X stuff and some yeah. of the things that I feel like people are looking at, they're, in my opinion, looking for the wrong things. Now, if Planet X exists, okay, great. So how come what the original story was in the 80s that came out was they had to use a certain type of telescope to even pick it yeah. up. And now if yeah. you can pick it up with a cell phone and it changes shape and size and, and the orbit's so far off that one second it's over here, then it's over there. And if it's in between the clouds and the lens, it's like, how is it in between the clouds and the lens? That means it's only mm -hmm. 50,000 feet away. How does that make sense? And then you got that. people yeah. that come, oh, well, it could be transparent. It could be chemtrails. And, and all of those possibilities I can see Yet, if we really want to get to the truth, if we've got that smoking uh, smoking gun, Chris, and say, here it is, people aren't going to go, oh, my gosh, man, that's just lens flare, or that's just a, oh, that's just yeah, a bug. No, I, I agree. That, again, not that I have, like, world 
revolutionary, powerful Superman, you know, footage. But <laughs> some of those two sun ones, I, I mean, come on. A bit of a rainbowish uh -huh. flare or something like yeah, that. You know what I mean? Like a one legged sun dog on this side or that side mm -hmm. or up here. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking the exact same thing. And I'm like, okay, now what if there was a window or something? But I'm like, why would there be a window or any kind of glass? And I couldn't tell if there was any kind of a reflection or anything beside the webcam or in front of it. Because I, from my understanding, it was just an all weather cam affixed to the top of his home. And now. Now, this is the funny part with Jeff. So he was using his friggin' iPhone with the little telescope attachment. If he could see that with his eyes and then go ahead and use this little goofy $20 attachment, I think that's significant. And if well, it's a... That makes me... And just real quick, I want to add to that. If, sure. if it's so easy for one person to spot this with a $20 telescope, then... Why is it somebody else? Yeah, I mean, because... People, are, a lot of times, yeah, they're looking at their cell phones, and it's getting really scary. The other day, I went to the park, and uh, I was walking my dog, and then when I went back to the car, there was five trucks and SUVs and cars parked around me, and there were several people in each vehicle, and they were all on their phones, and I was like, what the hell is going on? It's a beautiful day outside. They're in the park, in a parking lot, in their car. What are they doing? And then I was like, they're playing Pokemon. It's like oh, The Walking yeah. Dead. <laughs> I will assimilate. I want the Pokemon. Oh, let me have it's, it's, it's insane, Chris. People are lemmings oftentimes. But still, yeah. I think there's enough intelligent people out there to say, look at that, man. There's a freaking second sun. Look at that. You know what I mean? You ever wonder that kind of stuff? Yeah. So I had, uh, well, absolutely. I, there, I had one video of the Eucumenal Church of Christ where they believe that Jesus is already here. Okay, so these guys were hunting me down on Facebook, and they love me, and they have a video out somewhere on Facebook, or YouTube, I'll find it, where it shows two different sons, and I, I can't figure it out. I would say it was another significant video, too. I'll share that with you. I'll find it and share it. Um, and they have several people that are like, look, 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 what, you know, what's going on? Because we see it, and we're filming it. You know, what? You'd think there would be more like that. I agree. Why did I only see a red floaty thing for five minutes and then disappeared? I don't know. And and there are so many astronomers out there and amateurs that have nice equipment where they drop a couple of grand on a telescope and they know what to look for. They know where the constellations are and the planets are. And I don't hear many of them come out and, and talk about it. Now, once again, I'm not saying it isn't real because, I mean, you're, you're showing some great footage. And that one article that was just released uh, by Mr. Brown, Professor Brown from Caltech University, said there's a 99.993% chance of there being a giant planet on the outside of the solar system. And is it uh -huh. Planet 9? Is it Planet X? Is it Planet Timbuktu? Is it, you know, like you said, and that's another thing that kind of bothers me is all this disinformation about there being you know 37 moons and there's 14 different suns and there's uh -huh, going to be 18 uh -huh. of them that have zebra stripes and 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 then this one's named uh durka donka do and and this one over here is named diggly daggity it, you know i uh -huh. just think that we need to get <laughs> we need to find out what's real and and kind of just wipe away all the fluff you know what i mean because that way we'll have a much better chance of getting to the truth in my opinion i don't disagree I, my, my personal belief is I really think we're catching glimpses of something significant that astronomers and scientists did not believe that we should because it's only supposed to be seen in infrared, right? Well, that's, that's what they said, yeah. Belief. Yeah, and I, so I don't, there's too much weirdness, man. I don't like it. it there's just... I've, I've thought about, you know, before I interviewed with you today, I'm like, okay, if we were to really get down to the nitty gritty of every friggin' video and every, uh, every picture I've had, that would be undeniable that, okay, what is that? It would be the video I made. <laughs> right. I couldn't figure it out for the life of me. The other stuff I probably could explain away because I'm good at doing that. But, and I'm pretty <laughs> convincing. But at the same time, I just I really feel like we're seeing something that we're not. And 
something that, that know, shouldn't be there according to what we've been taught, you mean? Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, and then you hear stories about people that are on the gondola, you know, 13, 12 astronomers that all, you know, fall to their death. And why did that happen? And, you know, you've got people that are holistic doctors that are just automatically turning up dead. You know, you got to wonder... There hasn't been a lot of astronomer deaths lately, so I'm not too, you know, Marshall Masters is still around, so, um, you know, I don't know. I, I figured, you know, just to kind of really hypothesize about really, 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 is there something there? Yeah, I think there is. And I think we're casting a glimpse of it when we're not supposed to be, um, according to what mainline science or whatever uh, technology that we're aware of maybe in the in the public sector i guess well, I, I would say um if this thing is only an infrared body and we can only see it in infrared then what's going on with all the earthquakes sinkholes mass animal deaths you know the jet streams freaking out on top of everything else that's happening seems like we're having some earth changes so i, I don't know with that it's very convincing to me and that's kind of where I'm coming from on my channel. And I figured I would just interject that and say that. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, the, the video that I showed was the most kind. I just don't know how we can explain it other than it's potentially another body or a fake star. Now, the solar simulator, you've got that up. Yeah. This now, is th I do. this is from 1967. And uh -huh. you can actually go look at the original publication number. And the type, here's the dates, here's the inventor, here's the original assignee. Now, if you scroll down, it starts to talk about this literally solar simulator that will create sunlight. And here's the talks a little bit about the simulating the spectral range of sunlight. And mm -hmm. this is from 50 years ago. And then also, if you scroll down, it will show you the different patents that were essentially filed here. You can see... Here's some different ones, 1965, 1966. You can look at the title of it. And then here's one that I found that was quite interesting that I scrolled down on here. Um, large Area Pulsed Solar Simulator from 1999. And here is the patent number. So I clicked on it, and then it's right here. Here's a Large Area Pulsed Solar Simulator. So it's an advanced solar simulator. It illuminates the surface of a very large solar array, such as 120 feet by 20 feet in area. Now, if you throw this up into the atmosphere, and maybe let's say they made it 100 times this size, 1,000 times the size, uh, you know, maybe they knew that something was happening to the sun that our planet was going to have issues with, so they started blasting it with chemtrails to act as like a protective barrier. I don't know. I mean, maybe they're spraying the chemtrails too. to... Yep inject uh -huh. nano goblins in us so that they can activate it via cell phones if they think that we're dissidents and they can just push a button. I mean, maybe there's multiple applications for it. But you look at some of this stuff and you wonder, are some of these sightings that people are seeing, could uh -huh. they actually be a second sun that was created in a lab? You know, one of these artificial yeah. suns. We've all heard of the Dyson Cubes. Maybe they uh -huh. have that technology, but I think that this would be more realistic in some cases. What do you think? I agree. I think that we might be seeing some technology that we're not supposed to be. Yeah, that's very, very possible. And, and probably more plausible, particularly if, and I'm not trying to kill my own theory, right, but particularly if, if this thing can only really be seen in infrared, um, and that's definitive, right? Um, Absolutely. Yeah, we have to be seeing some technology that we're not supposed to be. I do have another video on my channel that uh, someone had given to me that um, was also identical to uh, a UFO on Look Now TV, where it's some kind of drone that projects like a triangle. I, I don't know what it is. You can see it in the video. It's sitting there warping. Let's see. Uh, the huh. lights are moving. And it's really weird looking. Okay, let me pull it up here. Yeah, if you go to my channel, if you're a new or returning subscriber, it should be the default. Uh, How many? You got about 100 videos, don't you? Maybe even more. I've got 66, I think, 67. Cool. Route 66. Uh -huh. All right, let's see here. I've actually driven almost all of Route 66. It's, uh, it's, it's oh, an wow. interesting route. Yeah. All right, let's see. Down more. 
Oh, shoot. Yeah, it's on the next page. That's great. You got so many videos. I've had fun with it, man. I hope right, it so... continues to grow for you. Thank you. Okay, where in the heck is that, dude? <laughs> you can see the one <laughs> that I did snow there. Here, okay, was this so... your first video, the... The Walmart That underground? was just one that turned out to be viral, but it was, no, I had some other videos. I've just pulled them. So, so you're in California then, and yep. do you s notice a lot of chemtrails and stuff out there? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Really bad. It, yeah, and, and particularly there in uh, Salt Lake Valley and Provo Valley, uh, Provo Canyon, I guess you would say. Um Mostly the Salt Lake area. I know that there's an inversion, but the chemtrails are so friggin' obvious. Yeah. And I got tired of the chemtrails, man, because I could see them all the time. I was taking pictures and trying to show people, right? But it just became so obvious to me that it just, I had to find something else more than fun. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Well, it's disgusting what they're doing. It is. And you wonder, are they spraying stuff in there to where it gets lodged into people? Like I was saying earlier, and you know, they could just activate a certain frequency and if they want to take out a city block or just a couple of dissidents or an entire city, it really, if these things are lodged in people, these nanoparticulates of yes. who knows what, and they can be activated by a frequency, you know, you could get They're a phone They're supposed to call. have Wi-Fi. They're supposed to be Wi-Fi enabled. I'm pretty sure. Smart dust. <laughs> Yeah, I, smart dust is I, real I, deal. I find you that article too, boo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously though. Like, okay, so why do you have smart dust that's Wi-Fi enabled? Why? What do you need that for? The internet of things? Sure. Yeah, there's very good, I am pretty sure there's a couple patents on that. Oh, a couple thousand probably. I mean, the nanotech uh, now has just gone crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're not, I mean... Conspiracy or not, I'm certain that we have the technology and it has been discussed. You know, right. So, yeah, I don't know if it's to be activated later, if it's to shield the earth, to help the magnetosphere, if it's supposed to help with the jet stream or the Gulf stream. And then, you know, it could be any excuse at this point. Um, we are being sprayed and there are literally hundreds of patents and there is no debate on that. There really is no debate on that one. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. Yeah, smart dust. I'm pretty sure there are Wi-Fi enabled smart dust chips. Look at this article right here. How smart dust could spy on your brain. MIT technology. Smart wow. dust may become the pinnacle innovation of the internet. Smart dust, computer world. How smart dust could be used to monitor human thought. And that's from Forbes.com. Yeah, you're a conspiracy theorist. Whoever wrote that on Forbes. Um, <laughs> robotics. You're a conspiracy theorist. CNN, smart dust aims to monitor everything. Conspiracy theorist. Um, yeah, I, I that's, that's a lot, yeah. <laughs> I wrote an article five years ago, Chris, about how Hewlett Packard was working on a way to blanket the world with these micro sensors. They wanted to put over a billion of these things around the world to monitor uh -huh. different movements. So uh -huh. link that in with an AI system and supercomputers that can calculate a quadrillion floating points per second, and you've got yourself a, a pretty mean machine there you know so who wow. knows what they're yeah, going to do with this stuff you brought out a good point those are not no-name websites that are talking about a real technology that has been developed yeah smart dust is a real thing now um, yeah. if you're to skynet the real skynet i'm not referring to the the terminator series but there's an yes. actual skynet satellite system that was developed in the 50s uh -huh. And this, uh, I wonder how close the Terminator series Skynet is in parallel to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm That's just going to pull that up real quick. Yeah, Let's sure. See. Look at this. Here it is. So Skynet wow. from the 60s, you can see that these are literally spy satellites. Here's the uh -huh. original Skynet one right here from November 22nd. And they've mm -hmm. just been improving them ever since. Wow. Yeah. Okay, here you go. Go ahead. Thank you. Oh, here, you need my thumbprint. Here. Because, yeah, they need my biometrics. Yeah, speaking here. of thumbprint, you been to Six Flags lately? <laughs> no, I was interested. Uh, do they really take your bot? Will you tell me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I went to Six Flags today, and it's like walking into a Department of Defense 
facility. They want your fingerprint, and there's about maybe a 1,000 or so cameras just within the first two blocks of the park. And not only do you have to give them your fingerprint, but they have to scan the chip card first, and then your print uh-huh. has to go with it. And if it doesn't match up or if the systems are down for whatever reason, which happens often in lines, it's, uh-huh. yeah, welcome to the new world. Wow, dude. So we have Great America here, which I think Six Flags has had some kind of a uh, an affiliation with business-wise. And I have been there in a few years, but I would not doubt that it has the exact same thing. <laughs> That's creepy, man. When do you think they're wow. going to? When do you think they're going to do uh, microchips well, more on a global scale? Because a lot of people do have the microchips now. I actually interviewed somebody a few months ago. His name's huh? Istvan, and he has been microchipped voluntarily. So when he yep. goes to the store now, he just swipes his hand and pays for stuff. He's actually uh, pushing the transhuman movement. He pushed the transhuman bill of rights, and he's running for president right now i think i have read about him and i have seen him yes wow um how would you like to be microchipped chris <laughs> you know i have some pretty strong spiritual beliefs about that being lds and i can tell you right now if there's no way i can buy or sell unless i have a chip that sounds like the beast system to me and you can come and chop my head off with a guillotine because I ain't going to take your chippy, bud. Yeah, I think that's I really think that the chip system if, because, yes, there's the technology exists, period. The end, end of story has been around for a while. Uh, obviously, with this individual that you've mentioned, yeah, he was probably able to swipe himself into his house and open doors in the car and remotely pay for things and, you know, with his wrist or whatever. I know that. The banking system really looks like it's going that way, too, other than just a chipped card. Um, uh, wow. I, my, my feeling is that if that will happen, and they're trying to really push that they, <laughs> they've got to make it trendy. They've got to make it cool, like some kind of jewelry or some kind of thing that's kind of fun first for people to be interested or... Or to be rebellious for their parents, you know, hey, mom, I got the new chip, you know. I thought about that. Um, or like a skin tattoo, something that was really easy to affix to you, but you could remove it. Um, we are going that direction, yes. It's so obvious. A cashless society and um, a military state. I mean, that really is what, like, worldwide. Have you watched the series Mr. Robot? Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Okay. I've heard a lot of good stuff about it. Yeah. Well, it's def- yeah, it's absolutely one of my favorite series out there right now. And I watch these films and TV shows, and I can see what the uh-huh. powers that be essentially are pushing down people's throats via subliminal programming as well as conscious programming. And they're definitely pushing this anonymous movement of shutting the banks down, hurting them via hacking systems, and creating uh-huh. a new system. Now, yes. I was warned about this stuff 20 years ago, man, over 20 years ago, actually, about the Microchip Society. And I do know that it does run deep in the LDS family lines uh, as well. And, and they're very <laughs> intelligent most of the time. I would say the more people than not that are LDS are highly educated. They're good with their money. They're prepared for the worst, and they, they're good people. They're, they're really good people. And one of the things that I've noticed is with all the stuff that's going on right now, it does parallel things that happened back in World War II before the roundups and stuff. But you know what? I saw this 15 years ago. I saw it 20 years ago. And it's like this slow boil. You know, they're, they're slowly boiling people. They're not going to make it happen all at once because people are going to feel comfortable with their air conditioning in their house. They can go to the store. They can buy their groceries. And as long as they can get by, have food in their belly, give their family uh-huh. a, at least a semi-safe place to sleep without having to worry about, you know, li- living on the streets or living in a tent and stuff, I think that it's going to be difficult to, to really change on a mass scale. Now, with that said, people like yourself, Chris, and others are definitely breaking out of the matrix, and you've even put yourself on the line and gone through some hardships at home because of your beliefs. And And I certainly applaud your uh, stance in, in trying to wake people up. I think that that's great. So 
don't let them get you down, man. I mean, definitely keep doing what you're doing, and, and hopefully you'll find a balance to when you do have something on the far left and on the far right. It oftentimes, what I've noticed over the years is it's kind of somewhere in the middle that usually is where the <laughs> truth lies oftentimes. I think you're awesome, Rex. I wish I had met you a lot sooner because you and I think a lot the same, buddy. Well, uh, and, and thank it's you, a good Chris. Thing. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, <laughs> something's wrong in more ways than one, if it's planets or not. And uh, it's going to come to a point, like I said earlier in the show, that those of us are going to going to have to challenge the authority ultimately in court or wherever it's going to be and let them know, look, you guys are lying to us and we're, we're tired of it. Um, and I, you know, I, uh, <laughs> it's going to have to be a soft revolution, but yeah, I agree with the slow, what, with the whole frog analogy, you can't boil them right away. You have to slowly cook them. Right. So I'm pretty sure that that's been happening there. Um, and if anyone really wants to balk at that type of a system really being implemented, I would say do a little bit of research on what's called the new age of the barbarian. Um, from what I understand, the guy, a lot of these folks uh, that were doctors were warned about a lot of the changes that are happening now back in 1969 in some big meeting, whatever. Um, and the guy, he, he was... Uh, I'll have to give you the article on this too, and I'll, I'm not to go on off on a weird direction. But a lot of what we're ha what's happening right now in the world regarding LGBT and the cashless society and all these different movements and different things that are okay now that used to not be okay appears to have been planned, very much so. So anyway, the guy he had a. a Photographic memory, they weren't allowed to take any notes. A couple years later, I guess after he had actually done some, uh, I guess he had remembered or he had taken the notes down and then he put out a video and of course he dies later. The New Order of the Barbarian has a lot of parallels to what we're seeing now and I thought that was just an in interesting tidbit of information I would share with you guys. It's like a four hour video so you've got to be able to do some homework, sit down and, and take some notes. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, they're lying to us. That's all there is to it. There is a day and they're not telling us the truth. And I really think that that's what it comes down to. And I, I can't stand it. Well, I appreciate yeah. your kind comments. You're awesome. Well, Chris, you're awesome too. And I certainly appreciate you coming on the leak project. I wish your channel the very best as well as yourself and your family and good. keep up the good work. Hopefully we'll have an opportunity to speak with you again sometime. Okay, good. I hope so. Thank you. Thank you very much. And folks, check out leakproject.com. If you go to Leak Project, you'll have access to exclusive content. Also, check out our new William Wallace channel. And we've got a new storefront at Leak Project, some of our new merchandise. Hope everybody's doing well. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. And remember, be the change you want to see. This is Rex Bear. Talk to you soon.